Welcome back to another episode of Rob's Mailbag here on SB Nation's YouTube channel. Thanks for popping by, as always. Uh, if you have a question for next week, and I urge you to get the questions in now before you forget, the email address is robsmailbag at sbnation.com. robsmailbag at sbnation.com. I read all your questions, and I'll use three or four of them next week. And uh, love to see them. Um, before I get started with this week's questions, though, I wanted to uh, do a quick little take on this last weekend. Uh, the most striking thing that happened, of course, was uh, the Mariners' uh, no-hit, no-hitter against the Dodgers. Uh, Kevin Millwood, who's been a real surprise all by himself, uh, I believe six innings pitched, and then the bullpen took over, five relievers. Uh, somebody asked me on the radio about that, wondered what was more unlikely, um, a, a no-hitter by one pitcher or a no-hitter by one pitcher plus a bunch of relievers. Um, and I think what's more unlikely is the no-hitter by one pitcher um, simply because uh, the manager can, can go to matchups uh, with his relievers, lefty-right, or lefty-lefty, righty-righty, etc. His arms are fresher, they're throwing harder. Um, I think if you're able to somehow simulate it, you would find that it's easier to throw a no-hitter with... It, look, relievers uh, give up fewer hits. It's that simple. So I think that's right. If I'm wrong, uh, let me know. Um, the other thing about the weekend was the Nationals swept the Red Sox. Um, the Rays swept the Marlins. Just goes to show you how you can't um, uh, just look at payrolls. Uh, but, you know, it turns out the Nationals don't have that low a payroll. Um, I looked it up there. Uh, $92.5 million this season is their payroll. Um, and, uh, of course, that pales compared to the Red Sox, who are at 175, but the Nationals' payroll is not particularly low. Um, I will note that um, a lot of it's going to their top three guys. Uh, Jason Worth, who's not really that been playing all that well. Uh, Ryan Zimmerman, who's given them almost nothing this season, at least power-wise. Um, and uh, Edwin Jackson, who's been good, but uh, not anything like their best starting pitcher. And their fifth highest paid player, John Lannon, is A, making only $5 million, and B, has spent the whole season in AAA. So the, when you look at the talent, what's actually gotten the Nationals to where they are, which is first place uh, in the NL East, um, it really is due largely to uh, the players they have who really aren't making a lot of money. Um, where, and, the, you know, you can say the same about the Red Sox in, in that a lot of their money's not on the field. Um, John Lackey, Carl Crawford, uh, but they are in last place, under 500, and uh, I don't know that we can attribute that much meaning to the Nationals sweeping them at Fenway Park, but it does seem to say something about the, the relative merits of those teams, and it's a little surprising given the, the payrolls. Uh, and you could say sort of the same thing about the Rays sweeping the Marlins. Uh, the Rays are now in first place um, in the AL East. I think it just it does go to prove that uh, at least this year, this season so far, you don't need to have a huge payroll uh, to win uh, because the you know look at the Marlins, I'm sorry, look at the Rays, um, look at the Nationals. Uh, a few other teams have done well uh, without big payrolls, which is uh, refreshing. Um, now let's get to the questions. I've got we've got three of them uh, today. Uh, first of all, James writes, Rob, as much fun as it is for us to watch a non-pitcher pitch, a bit of schadenfreude, I think, are there any mercy rules in place for a team who, that is losing by a considerable margin, say 10 plus runs, and has used all their pitchers and bench players? Um, can a manager surrender the game before he has to ask one of his positional players to pitch or have the next game starter warm up? Well, the, the quick answer is no, there aren't any rules in Major League Baseball for there are any mercy rules as you have in uh, softball for example um, and there really is no provision uh, for anything like that uh, a manager could you know, his only option would be to simply forfeit the game and the way he would forfeit the game is to just not put a team on the field and that's happened a very few times um, over the long history in the Major Leagues um, where a manager, for whatever reason, usually because he was upset with an umpire's ruling about something, uh, Earl Weaver did this once in the 70s, I believe, uh, just refused to put his team on the field, in which case it's an automatic forfeit. Um, but if a manager did that today, and you could 
understand the justification. I mean, if you're down, let's say, 12 or 13 runs in the ninth inning, uh, you don't want to burn one of your, your of your relief pitchers, um, and you don't want to risk injuring one of your one of your position players. Um, but the rules, well, they don't allow for you to do anything else other than put somebody out there. If you forfeited, uh, the game would be over. You would accomplish the goal of not using somebody you didn't want to use. Uh, I suspect there would be a hefty fine levied uh, against the club. I mean, perhaps in the millions of dollars, um, just to discourage anyone else from doing the same thing. Certainly in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. Um, you know, the principle basically is that if a fan pays for a ticket, they get to see the game completed to its natural conclusion. Uh, you know, notwithstanding acts of God, um, as uh, as they would say in a legal document, uh, you know, a weather situation is different, uh, or the lights go out, but uh, um, a, a team would be vilified if they just refused to put a te- to, to play uh, in the in the interest of uh, saving a pitcher uh, or relief pitcher for for the next day. So we won't ever see that happen. Uh, I'm I'm fairly certain. Uh, the next question is from Arthur in Philadelphia. Arthur writes, "Hi Rob. While attending hockey games, it's common to see replays on the jumbotron. Sometimes the replay reveals a bad call by the referee, and the fans collectively groan. This never seems to happen at baseball stadiums, suggesting the umpires enjoy some protection from the cameras all seeing eye. Why is this the case? Well, I have no experience with the hockey thing, uh, so I can't really speak to the comparison. Uh, I do trust you. I do trust you. Um, I think there are a couple of things uh, going on here. One, um, you're right, the, the umpires do have some sway there. I think they're, the umpires' union is stronger than the unions in most other sports. The umpires would go nuts if they started showing all of the close calls on those giant screens, which are massive now in baseball. Most ball, most teams have, most stadiums have huge video screens where you really could see exactly what happened if they, if they showed the, the play again. Um, you know, one nice thing about a hockey game from the referee's perspective is the fans can't get to them because of the the plexiglass that surrounds the ice. In baseball, um, one can imagine a situation where uh, a call was uh, clearly wrong, uh, made against the the home team in a key spot. Uh, I mean, look, it's it probably wouldn't happen, but you can certainly imagine uh, one or more fans jumping easy, easy to do in baseball, jumping over the the wall and 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 rushing out of the field and and maybe attacking an umpire and obviously that's not something that anybody wants to see. So I think that's part of it. It's the it's the difference in the accessibility that the that the fans have to the field. Um, and I don't think we want to change that. I mean, we could put plexiglass around the baseball field. I don't think anybody wants to see that. It might happen someday. For various reasons, including the danger of foul balls, but I think the you could put a net around as well. I think the longer we delay that from happening, the the happier most of us are, are as fans. Um, we want to be able to look right onto the field. Uh, we don't want something between us and, and the action. Something will happen. Something will change. Something always changes. Uh, last question, um, and it's another umpire question, actually. Jacob Eckbert in Denton, Texas, writes. Uh, Rob, what do you think of putting some kind of audio version of pitch track to the home plate umpire's ear? It occurs to me that the reputation of umpires takes a huge hit to their credibility based on pitch track. The situation could be reversed if you gave it to them as a tool to help them do their jobs. After all, why should nearly everyone have live access to this information except the person who needs it most? They would not be required to abide by the technology. As their ruling would remain binding, it would just be a tool to enhance their perceptions. I love your work. Oh well, thanks, Jake. If I I love uh, I love you saying that. I think that look in 20 years will it be the same as it is now? No, I don't think it will be. Uh, it's hard to see exactly how that would work, though. First of all, the strike zone it's malleable. Um, it moves around depending on the the, the batter's stance. Um, it uh, it's a it's three dimensional, not two dimensional, which is what we see on television, typically. Um, so I'm not sure how that would work exactly, how they would set the box up and get the get the the signal to the umpire. The other, the biggest problem is the umpire's ball strike call. It's instantaneous. 
Um, it has to happen almost immediately. Um, and I think it would be difficult to give the umpire input quickly enough where he would be able to then make the call um, within a split second. Um, I think that would be real tough. I think that what you would do instead is transition ultimately, and this may never happen, but technically it's probably feasible or will be. There, there will be a transition. There could be a transition to a situation where uh, the the ball, of the strike, is called automatically based on sensors within the the player's uniform, perhaps, or and certainly within the baseball and the plate. Um, one can at least imagine that. I can. I find that an easier thing to imagine working than somehow signaling to the umpire through an earpiece where the pitch was. I think that would just take too long, the whole process. Um, but uh, hey, first things first. First we need expanded video review on uh, whether balls are caught or trapped, whether runners are safe or out at first base, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, once we get that ironed out in the next year or two, I think, um, then we can at least start thinking about what's the next big thing. I, but I do think we're a long ways off from um, automating uh, the balls and the strikes. It might be five years, it might be 10 years or 20, it might be never. Um, I, I think never is a long time, uh, but I do think it'll be quite a while before we see anything like that um, in the major leagues. That's it for this week. Uh, again, I appreciate all the great questions that I've been getting. Um, and. Please send me yours. Uh, again, this is Rob's Mailbag at SBNation.com. And uh, I'll see you next week. Thanks.